Sim Tower should have been one of the most boring games I ever played as a kid. The focus is constructing and luring people to a multi-purpose high-rise building by creating a one-stop shop for people's every need. Condos, restaurants, offices, movie theaters, and more. Meeting patron needs means that they'll stick around for the long term, and the eventual goal is to increase your building's population, raise its star rating by meeting certain requirements, and eventually have it become a full-fledged tower. It all sounds quite riveting, I'm sure, but despite it lacking some of the social and customization aspects that make some of the newer sim games so much fun, somewhere in my distant past, Sim Tower got its hooks into me anyway. My memories of Sim Tower were of a game that you could get swept up in, making it a fantastic pastime for rainy days when I was younger. You could listen to the cacaws of the birds in the construction site, or take in the ringing phones and grumblings of office workers while you eyeballed them from afar with your magnifying glass. You could watch people turn completely red with anger while they waited eternally for your single elevator car, and you could show movies at your movie theater for multiple years without batting an eye. There were so many little tidbits from this game that were fuzzy little glints in my memory, and replaying the game recently brought them all back into very sharp focus. When the game begins, your tower is non-existent, and it's very much your own creation from the ground up. You're limited in terms of what you can build at first, and only have options for a lobby, offices, and condos, but as people start coming to your tower and your star rating increases, available builds expand to include other amenities that would be necessary to keep the people living or visiting there happy. When I was younger, I'd just build whatever I wanted while following the game's limited advice about what people were demanding. Other than the occasional prompt, the potential benefit or need for each type of space is not really stated anywhere in-game, and it's up to you to decide how to add to the tower constructively. Even though the manual is incredibly robust and helpful in its descriptions, right down to the small details of how things work, especially in this very long-winded section on elevators, like many other people, you probably didn't have a copy of that growing up. As a kid before the times of the internet, I was burdened by trial and error to see which facilities yielded stable population growth rather than just a temporary influx. Casually, it's fun to do whatever you want, but playing to win the game requires a lot more strategy, and winning was my goal coming back to Sim Tower at this stage in my life. Even though I still remembered the basic ins and outs of this game, there were quite a few things I'd forgotten, like just how tedious it is to place the various room types in the building. If you're anything like me, making sure that these rooms maximize the available space to cram more people in is top priority. I never leave space between them, and if I dropped something down in the wrong spot, I didn't hesitate to demolish and rebuild. It didn't feel good seeing my very limited cash dwindle early on since you have to pay to both tear things down as well as build them, but my need for symmetry won out most of the time. As careful as you try to be though, aesthetics go out the window eventually since you end up with these ugly little overhangs when you put different kinds of facilities into your tower. None of them line up at the ends of the floors, and there wasn't anything that could be done to avoid this. When planning what to put where, not only are there rules about where certain spaces can be placed, but there are also unspoken ones about where they should be. Even though the game's manual says a lot of things, it doesn't really tell you much about incompatibilities. It does occasionally allude to some things like which types of sim tenants will use which spaces, but some things you have to learn the hard way. Condos and offices shouldn't go next to one another, for example, since condo dwellers will find their office neighbors too noisy. And offices need to be concentrated around lobbies where stairs can be placed, but people won't walk more than three flights to get to a lobby or an elevator. You also need room service stations for your hotel rooms, but how many rooms is too many for a single service station? There are so many things to feel out and have inevitably fail here, and I personally don't find that kind of thing fun. To see my tower's population growth grind to a halt or see a massive exile happen was disheartening, especially when I had no idea how to fix it. There always seems to come a time where there are more condos for sale than occupied, and money is pouring out of my bank account. One of the only remedies at these points is to start dropping prices. Thankfully, there's an anger map for your building so that you can see where people are content or ferociously unhappy, as well as the status of various storefronts you've added. Almost every single condo I built in my tower needed to have its price dropped at some point or another, and there's no better way to put this. It's agonizing. You have to click on every single room individually and manually drop the buying price down so that new people will move in. 
Sometimes that fixes the problem, but other times people living there are still not happy, so you'll have to go back a short time later and lower it even further. The game isn't that great for providing feedback on what's wrong or how to change things for the better. Generic statements like conditions are terrible don't exactly go very far in helping you fix specific issues, and most of the time, all you can do is lower costs or add more elevator cars to your shafts while crossing all of your fingers that collective rage will be quelled. Like other sim games, there are random events to contend with here, including terrorist attacks and fires. These are easy to prepare for once you know how they work, but you might face some serious damage the first time through if you don't know how to plan in advance. Even though I know they're coming, I still find them really stressful, and all the best planning in the world won't really ever help you prevent all of the damages that they cause. Thankfully, the randomness that pops up in this game is not all bad. As silly as it might sound, one of my favorite recurring events is seeing Santa Claus fly by the tower at year's end. I'd stop everything I was doing to look for his sleigh for a few moments before the day turned over. I love that he exists in the Sim universe. By coming back to Sim Tower again after so long, I was hoping to relive what I remembered as an overwhelmingly positive and fun experience, but it wasn't as sunny as I remembered. That's not to say that I didn't enjoy reminiscing over the sights and sounds of everything that this game has to offer, but kicking it up from playing casually to trying to actually win the game sucked some of the fun out of it for me. Not only that, but micromanaging every aspect of the tower with such a limited interface and barely any feedback just didn't click with me this time around, and it was far from the relaxing experience I was hoping to find again. Even though the game's manual explicitly states that there's no real way to win the game, it's not hard to want to vie for that tower status, and in the end, that was my undoing. The spirit of Sim Tower lives on in its various ports and in its spiritual successor, Ute Tower, so there's still hope for me to find a smoother experience in other games in this niche.